I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been in a situation that you did not want to be? I'm talking about a nasty job that you can't leave because you're dependent on the money. I'm talking about a relationship, a marriage that you don't have the confidence or the courage to leave, but you um, until you've got something to do. That's that's the stuff that you want to move away from. But there could also be another side of it. The stuff that you want to move towards, which is I'm waiting for, I'm, I'm working on a really, really good um, business opportunity, but it's just things are just not falling into place. I want to do something creative, like writing a book, and the muse is just not coming. And I know I've got a good book. I know when I publish it, people will read it. So you spend a lot of time either running away from something or moving towards something, and you work your butt off. You do absolutely everything you could possibly think of, and it's just not happening. Why? Because we live our life in cycles and because we are creative people. Now, we live our life in cycles, which is, um, and if you look back at your life, you will recognize that those cycles. I'm not talking just about the sun coming up every uh, morning or next week, seven days from now, it will be Sunday again. I'm talking about longer cycles, like five years, seven years, nine years cycles. And those are all cycles of creativity. And we, if we don't understand how those cycles work, it's wonderful when you're in a good cycle. It's wonderful when things go well. But when things don't go well and, and you, you, you're really trying everything, it's really bad. And it, and it feels like it just gets worse. I'm sure you can all associate with working very hard to change something to the point where you are exhausted. You are physically, emotionally, spiritually exhausted and you think, it's just not good. Why do I keep trying? And it's because we don't understand the creation process. Remember, God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh day. And we, we do the same. We create like God created. And now you're saying to me, uh uh, we don't create like God created because there's only God. You know the Vedas, the Hindu Vedas, which is the Hindu ancient scripture, tell us that there are 8,000 species of life on this planet. How many of those species have the ability to create? Have you ever heard about a zebra doing a beautiful painting? About an elephant writing a beautiful book? About a mosquito creating a beautiful symphony? No! Because out of 8,000 species, we are the only one species that actually can create like God and that should create like God in a way that will make the world a better place for everyone. And that is what the creative cycle is about. If we don't use that creative cycle, if we don't accept that responsibility for creating, we just get so frustrated. But then what if we do use that creative power and we do accept the responsibility for creating and it is just not happening? What do we do then? Well, look back. Look back at where you came from. You created, created, created. You worked very hard. You set your affirmations. You did your business plan. You went for counseling. You did whatever you needed to do to get out of the same situation or to get into the next one. But because we work in cycles, we need to first finish a cycle and then move into the next cycle. And that space between the old one and the new one, I like to call it the dark night of the soul. If you've been there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It gets so dark. And you, you are exhausted. You don't know what to do next. And you feel life is just not worth bothering. And that's when, because we don't understand the, the thing about six days of creation and one day of rest. Now, how long is that day, six, uh, those six days of creation? That's when we as people have a big problem with time. We don't understand. Starting with a day. How many hours are there in a day? 24. 24. If, if that is true, then why do we need a, 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 an extra day every four years? 
to catch up. We can't even get that right. Looking further on, looking at the, on the, in the greater scheme of things, how far are we on the calendar in terms of Christianity? You might say 2018 years and nine months, but it depends on which calendar you're looking at. If you're looking at the Julian calendar, which has been phased out in Europe, it's, it's different from the Gregorian calendar, which we're using now. You know, when they changed over in the 1562, I think, 16th century, when they changed over from the Gre uh, Julian to the Gregorian calendar, there was chaos. It was much worse than in England changing from summertime to wintertime. It was much worse. In England specifically, they went to bed on the 11th of September of that year. They woke up the next morning, and guess what? It was the 1st of September. Because they needed to get the calendar sorted. So we, we really struggle with understanding the concept of time. And when it comes to understanding how long is six days of creation and how long is one day of rest, we, we completely lost. So I like to think of it as six units of time of creating and then a seventh unit of time of rest. Now, if you look at the creation process in that sense, it makes complete sense that at the end of your six units of time of creation, you will be exhausted because you've worked really, really hard. You do need to rest and you do need to trust and you do need to understand that as humans, we have this incredible creative power and we need to understand how to use it. So when you hit that bit, 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 uh, at the end of the old cycle, at the beginning of the new cycle, and you are exhausted because you've tried everything, what are your options? You can feel sorry for yourself. You can say, life is not worth living anymore. You can say, I've bitten off more than I can chew. Or you can say, hmm, I see the pattern here. I see what's cooking here. I am going to rest. I am going to look after myself. I'm going to take, take care of myself. I'm going to sleep when I need to sleep. I'm going to eat better than I, than I ever have eaten because I've done my creation. I'm now in the rest period before it materializes. I am going to take it slowly. I'm going to love myself because I'm good at what I'm doing. And guess what? I have seen it time and time again. I've recently experienced it on a massive scale in my own life. You accept that period of rest. You don't fall into all those terrible traps. You look out for yourself and you wait for the miracle. You wait for the materialization. You believe, you have faith, you trust. And guess what? Guess what? The universe starts to live in. Not when you want it. Not when it's time. But when the timing is right. When the timing is right for everybody. Not just for me, myself and I. But for me and everybody else that incarnated with me that I have a contract with. When that timing is right. You ain't seen nothing yet. I recently... Re re reached the end of a 17 year period of creation and I was very creative you'll find me on Amazon and on all, all over the internet I was very creative I got to a point where I thought uh -uh, I've, I, I've had enough of snow I want sunshine I need to make a massive change again massive as in moving from one continent to another continent so I needed to do that I put a huge amount of energy into it. Thank goodness, thank goodness, because of all, all the spiritual work I've done before, I've seen the pattern in my own life, I've seen the pattern in other people's lives. I got to a point where I no longer had a roof over my head. Everything I owned was in a warehouse in Cape Town. I was still in England, still in the snow. And I thought to myself, you know, what, what do I do next year? And the voice came very clearly, wait, wait. Trust, have faith, you've created. Guess what happened? Somebody found my details on the internet, found my CV on the internet. They phoned me. They said, would you like a three-year contract? I said, where? They said, in Pretoria. I said, can I meet you first? I've got my conditions. I want to check you out first. Next thing, I'm back here. What did I do while I was in that 
no longer there, not yet here. I slept like a baby. I watched at what I was, was eating. I made plans for when I'm coming here. I had no idea how, how it's going to work. Because in December, as I kind of, I was going towards the airport and a company in England said to me, here's a permanent job for you. And I could have said, <laughs> you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm not interested. But then I, I thought, actually, I am interested. If that is part of my creation, why don't I accept it? I accepted it. It worked out brilliant. Brilliant. I accepted it. It was a good job. I left a good job. I came here for a good job. Because I understood that period of darkness. And now I'm in the next creative cycle. It's just the beginning. It's painful. It's not necessarily easy. But I understand it's probably another 17 year cycle. Now, not everybody has got a 17 year cycle. For some people, it's like four years, five years, eight years, nine years. It depends. Look back at your life. Look back at the, the, the cycles that were really good. That how it was bliss. It was absolutely wonderful. Or it was challenging because you had to raise small children and you didn't get enough sleep. But eventually, goodness, I get the message and I start sleeping through the night. Look back at where you really had big challenges, maybe health-wise, maybe financially. And you'll see, you'll start to notice the pattern in your life. And when you notice that and you hit this no man's land, you know, you know, now is the time to absolutely have faith and do the right things. I hope that's going to help you when you, when you can do that. That's what you do. Thank you. Thank you.